Las Vegas flash flooding. On September 1st, 2023, Las Vegas, a city known for its vibrant lights and bustling <laughs> nightlife, was suddenly hit by a fast moving thunderstorm, causing flash flooding across the city. I do not own the copyrights to the video. This video is for informational purposes only, folks. This is Las Vegas. Uh, I tell you, folks, it's devastation all over the world, folks. Just prepare yourself. Get stuck up on your stuff. Have your torch lights, your sleeping bag, your tents inside of the house in case the bubble goes out. And it's winter, you can open the tent inside the house and go to the sleeping bag and keep warm. This is Las Vegas, flat out, folks. Hey, it's coming all over. Just prepare yourself. Just prepare yourself for the worst. I'm hoping not, but the way things are going, folks, I don't know. I don't know. This is Vegas right now. It's hell, and we got, we got, oh, The deluge resulted in perilous conditions on the roadways. One harrowing incident involved a driver who had to be rescued from a flooded car. Las Vegas. Many others chose to abandon their vehicles, especially in areas near the famous Las Vegas Strip. The National Weather Service reported significant rainfall, with over an inch in some areas. For instance, Boulder City saw 1.14 inches of rain, and near Interstate 15 at Charleston Boulevard, the rain was relentless. Whoa. This catastrophic flooding occurred during the monsoon season, which typically spans from June to mid-September in Las Vegas. The summer of 2022 had already been one of the wettest in a decade. The National Weather Service extended flash flood warnings for various parts of Clark County, imploring residents to stay off the roadways and exercise utmost caution. The widespread impact of the storm was evident as NV Energy reported thousands of power outages in the Spring Valley area, leaving many without electricity. What can I say, family? Protect yourself. Sinkhole. Some as large as quarters and strong winds accompanied the storms, posing threats to vehicles, roofs and trees, further escalating the disaster. Authorities advised extreme caution while traveling, especially on flooded roadways, and recommended avoiding areas prone to flooding whenever possible. Just a day after the Las Vegas flash flooding, Nevada faced another calamity as the annual Burning Man Festival in the Black Rock Desert was inundated with heavy rainfall and flash flooding. The situation was so dire that the state of Nevada declared a national emergency in the festival area. Wow. The rainstorm dropped up to 1.5 inches of rain transforming the desert landscape into a sea of impassable mud, rendering roads leading in and out of the festival grounds completely unmanageable. Thousands of festival goers 
found themselves stranded within the festival grounds as entry and exit points became blocked. Both the main gate and airport were closed except for emergencies, and approximately 70,000 people were estimated to be trapped. Authorities advised attendees to shelter in place, urging them to conserve resources such as food, water and fuel, transport and essential supplies. The unexpected heavy rainfall disrupted one of the festival's most anticipated traditions, the burning of a large wooden effigy. A focal point of the event. Despite the adversity, festival goers displayed remarkable resilience and creativity building mud sculptures and offering assistance to one another in the challenging conditions. Nevada's double disaster has left its mark, both in the bustling streets of Las Vegas and in the serene expanse of the Black Rock Desert. While the unexpected heavy rainfall brought hardship, the resilience of the affected communities and the support of emergency services have shown the true spirit of unity in the face of adversity. See, with that come back to what I said previously in a video, with this racism thing, the rain is not racist. The mud is not racist. It affects everybody. So if you don't come together as one and live together, see what's gonna happen? It will devastate everybody, not just black people only. White people, Indians, Puerto Ricans, everybody will get the taste of the devastation if we don't come together and try to help one another when disaster strike. It is simple as that. As the cleanup and recovery efforts continue, the hope is that these communities will emerge stronger than ever before. I do not own the copyright to the video. The video is for awareness and informational purposes only. Now, this is Florida. We get saw Las Vegas. This is Florida. And this is not last year, a couple of days ago. In Florida's several parts and left behind a ton of damage. Keaton Beach was right in the middle of the destruction. Homes there are barely even recognizable now. This one house had its roof ripped off and the bedroom wall smashed to pieces. Another building got wrecked too from the powerful winds and storm surge. The waves crashed over porches and nearly buried some of the beach houses. The flooding from the hurricane was so bad it actually reversed the flow of the Steinhatchie River. Boats got slammed into the bridge because of it. High tides and the storm surge kept the coastal flooding going even after Idalia passed. Farther inland, the rain and wind knocked down trees and buildings. In Perry, one family oh, freaked good. out when they're trees good. almost fell on their house. Oh my gosh. No! Nearby, the storm took down a gas station as trees crashed everywhere and made a huge mess. It also ruined the gas pumps underneath. It was even worse because so many people didn't have power. Hundreds of thousands in Florida and Georgia were left totally in the dark. And like I said in previous videos, folks, Amazon sells. Amazon sells the solar power generators. 50 bucks and up with the panel. So this is the warning. Stock up on the solar power generators from Amazon. Stock up on your full stuff, keep cash in the house, and prepare yourself. This is Florida and Las Vegas. It's going to get worse. Here we go. Florida's first lick of a 100-year-old oak tree that split in two and fell on the governor's mansion while she was home with her kids. Crazy. Idalia left some serious destruction behind. Now let's see in detail. Hello, and welcome to Alerts On. A huge hurricane named Idalia recently caused major destruction and flooding across Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. 
It grew from a Category 1 storm into a major hurricane super fast in less than one day. This led the four states in its path to declare emergencies. At least three people died when Idalia first hit Florida's coastline on Wednesday morning. It brought high winds, heavy rain, and dangerous storm surges up the coastline as it moved. It's not known yet if those deaths were directly from Idalia. In Perry, storefront no! windows were shattered. Building and strong winds knocked down branches and snapped utility poles. The Associated Press reported that a man died while clearing a fallen tree in the Valdosta area as Idalia moved through. Flooding was also widespread, swallowing roads and closing major highways like Interstate 75. Around Augusta, numerous people had to be rescued from flooded cars and homes. In Georgia, the insured damage was around $500 million with the most severe losses to farms and properties. The storm's remnants would later soak parts of Atlanta, adding to previous terrible flooding there. Though no longer a hurricane, Idalia kept dumping huge amounts of rain as it tracked over South Carolina. Up to 18 inches of rain already flooded river basins. A likely tornado from Idalia flipped a car off a highway in Goose Creek as people watched in disbelief. Two people in the car had minor injuries. Near Charleston, storm surge flooded the historic downtown and other coastal areas. Further inland, widespread flooding in the capital Columbia overwhelmed drainage and damaged buildings. Across the state, thousands were forced to leave their flooded homes. At least two deaths were blamed on Idalia in South Carolina. The damaging freshwater flooding made the coastal damage even worse. With early insurance claims over $1.5 billion. Though now just a remnant low pressure system, Idalia's rains still caused major flooding in parts of eastern North Carolina. Carolina had around $500 million in damage with the most losses to farms and property. Thanks to early warnings and evacuations, the loss of life was less than it could have been. Now begins the long recovery as people rebuild their lives after Idalia. Though it's gone, this deadly hurricane's impacts will be felt for months and years across the southeast. But the resilience of these coastal communities will shine through, as it has after many storms before.